We have been so lazy today. I'm off work. And <laughs> it is now 3 o'clock. I've not read anything. But you know what? That's okay. I've literally read for like two weeks nonstop. Not even counting this reading rush. <sighs> so I just kind of took a morning to myself. Hello. <laughs> I'm about to get up though. I just took a nap. So did this guy. And I'm going to go do some fun errands with my mask, of course. I hardly ever go out anymore and do anything just for fun. But um, I want to go see if our Barnes & Noble is open. And I need to go let Sophie out. And I'd love to find Odin some, a new toy or two. So <laughs> I should probably do something. It was really rainy looking earlier today. It didn't get cleared up until like, I don't know, 2.30. And so I never made it to the pool. I took a nap instead. <laughs> <laughs> I just left Barnes and Noble. I got one book. Are you ready for it? <laughs> I just poked myself in the nose. <laughs> uh, the Shadow of Kiyoshi by F.C. Yi. I am so excited to read the second book in the Kiyoshi series. The first one was excellent. Um, it had everything that you want in it and I'm super excited. I probably will reread the first one just so that I remember everything but I did love the first one. So if you like Avatar and you've not checked this out, they did create a um, YA book series about Kiyoshi and it is excellent. Okay, let's go to TJ Maxx. Okay, and that was a success. I ended up at Home Goods because TJ Maxx, for whatever reason, didn't have anything. I always find Odin's dog toys at TJ Maxx um, because they have like name brand stuff, but at half the price and with him, he goes through toys and things like that so much that I hate paying full price at regular pet store retailers if I can help it. I mean, I'll support every once in a while, but I tend to like to save some money if I can. But yeah, we definitely had a successful trip. I'll let him show you the haul when we get home. Okay, are you ready to tell everybody what you got? You ready to do your own haul? So we got this little fire hose fetchy thing. I don't know. It says it was super strong. Chew shield. We'll see about that. What do you think? Okay, wait. I gotta take the plastic off. Hold on. Then next, we got some new balls. Odin loves anything that squeaks. So, he's super excited about that. Okay, hang on. And then we got this like round disc that squeaks. And it has little tassels, which he'll rip those right off. I'm sure. And then up next, we got this big giant stick bone, which he seems very interested in. Okay, hang on. I'm going to take all the wrappers off. And then I got two of the antlers for him. He can't really bully sticks and things like that. He'll swallow whole. So these he really can't. Hang on. I'm going to open it. Is this the one you want? Sit. Odin. He said, no, shut up, Mom. Open my stuff. Okay. Everything we got was from Home Goods. <laughs> okay, hang on. I'm going to open it now. Hi, friends. Uh, I wanted to check in with you guys and give a little reading update. I have read about a hundred pages of the Court of Miracles and I'm not a hundred percent sure quite how I feel. 
it's definitely interesting. I'll give it that. Um, it, it's holding my attention, but I'm feeling really disoriented in the world. Um, it kind of goes from zero to 60 in no time. And I don't feel like I have a grasp on the main characters. There's been not a lot of um, character development. I mean, I honestly don't even know how old our main character is. I think she's 14 right now. Uh, I don't really know. Um, pretty sure she was nine when this whole thing started. But I'm not even sure of that. I know her name's Nina. <laughs> so basically the premise is... There are all these different guilds. Well, okay, let me back up. So this is in the early 1800s in uh, France of sorts. And there's an area of the city, like there's two different areas. There's like the aristocrat area, from what I can understand so far. And nothing it happens over there. And then there's like the walled off area, I believe, where all of the thieves and assassins and ghosts, which are beggars, and um, flesh sellers, and those types live. And they have formed this alliance of sorts, and they have a guild. And you can belong to any of these guilds, and so on and so forth. Um, basically, our main character, Nina, is a child at the time, and her sister realizes that they are in trouble, that her father is essentially selling her, uh, selling the oldest sister, Azelma. Um, so she takes it upon herself to be the savior of her little sister, Nina. And she begs her friend, who kind of works for all the guilds, um, to hide her and basically sell her to um, the Guild of Thieves um, so that her father can't sell her as well. So, basically, all of that plan gets set into motion, and we find out that the big bad guy is the, the, uh, the main guy at the Guild of Flesh, um, and it's exactly what you think that it is. <laughs> so, he's called the, I think his name's like the Tiger or something like this, um, but he is the person who's buying Azelma. And, of course, Nina freaks out, doesn't want to go, like, doesn't want any of this to happen. And her main goal in life is to rescue her sister. Uh, but, all like, basically nobody can touch the tiger. Everyone's scared of him. No one wants to, anything to do with him. Nobody wants to go against him. Um, she's kind of, like, <laughs> bad, like, swimming up a creek without a paddle here, trying to save her sister. But, anyway, at this point, I'm 100 pages in. I, I'm just really confused. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else has read this and maybe feels the same way, but I feel like there is so much happening. Like, it, it's definitely action-packed, but I'm not following our characters. Like, I'm not really, I, I mean, I'm just kind of going along with him and hoping that it's going to make sense at some point. But it's going so fast that I'm not feeling it. Like, I don't really care. I, I don't care right now about any of this. I mean, coming off of a high of, like, such good books so far, this reading rush, this one is just really putting me off for some reason. And maybe I'll change my mind. I, again, I'm only 100 pages in, so that's not that far. But I still, like, to be 100 pages in and not even really know the age of my main character, what is happening? <laughs> so, anyway, I don't know if that summary even made a lick of sense. Because, frankly, that's how I feel. Like, I just feel like none of this is making sense. So, I'll keep reading and I will update you guys in a little while. Okay, so I just sat here for like five minutes and read some of the Goodreads reviews for The Court of Miracles. And I feel like my thoughts are well justified. It makes sense. A lot of people are saying that they don't know what the plot is. Agreed. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I kind of know. But then I feel like I don't. And that the time skips are extremely jarring. Yes, I 100% agree with that. Because I'm like, wait, how old is she again? What's happening? I mean, suddenly she's like this amazing thief. And I mean, how? Well, I don't know. There's no building. Like, there's no character building. I, I don't know. How, how did we get here? That's what I want to know. How did we get from point A to point B? How did she go from 9 to 14? I would like to know. <laughs> Um, yeah. 
it, it makes a, okay. I'm glad that I wasn't the only one having these feelings. And I mean, if you've read it and you really enjoy it, I mean, listen, I, I'm not here to debate about it. These are just my personal thoughts and feelings on it. I'm just finding it really jarring. Like you're just thrown into it and all of a sudden she's five years older and all these things have happened, but it doesn't help create the character in my book. But anyway, I'll stop ranting. I don't want to DNF it, especially because I bought such a nice edition of it. <laughs> oh, that's what I get for buying books. Like, that's what I get for cover buys or for, like, synopsis buys. I don't know. It's fine. Everything's fine. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Here's what I find very unrelatable, unbelievable. I don't know. So basically, Nina is like the best of her age when it comes to thieving. And basically, she is tasked with rescuing somebody from a place that no one has ever been rescued from before. And at first, she's like, oh man, can't do that. And then all of a sudden, within the span of, I don't know, five pages, she's suddenly miraculously able to do so. Does that make sense to anyone else? How? There's like no buildup. I don't understand. How can one just miraculously know how to do these things that no one else has ever done before? I mean, I get prodigies like trust me I get that but I just feel like we just don't really know these characters and I am learning <laughs> that I really like character development and whew, I am almost to page 200 and I still am just not I'm not having a good time and I'm just pushing forward because I'm already 200 pages in do I really really want to DNF it at this point probably not I just want to get it done. And that's not the way I want to live my life or read my books. <sighs> I just feel like there's a lot of like running around and a lot of things are happening and everything seems to go perfectly. I don't know. That's where I'm at. I didn't leave the kitties out today. Got them a new scratcher and some treats. So they are enjoying it. Good morning, guys. Happy Saturday. Did I forget to close out this vlog? Yes. <laughs> Did I stay up till three finishing the Court of Miracles? Yes. Was it because I was having a great time? No. <laughs> was it because I just wanted to get it finished? You got it. Also, sorry for the squeaks. As you saw in our haul, Odin got some new balls and apparently they were extremely squeaky and he howls at them and it is quite funny. So if you hear random squeaking in the background, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wanted to close out this vlog and also take some time to discuss the Court of Miracles and my thoughts. Now, of course, if you've read this and you liked it and you loved it, that's awesome. I definitely think that, you know what, like everyone has very different taste in books. So if you liked it, <laughs> I'm so glad because, you know, supporting authors is also important as well. And I believe that this was a debut novel for this author, um, Kester Grant. And I think that there were some positives. And so first of all, let's talk about what I liked. So I definitely like the setting. Um, this is supposed to be like, basically Les Mis. So France, at the time around the revolution, it's technically after the revolution. And it's like, the concept is, what if the revolution failed? What if they lost? Which I think is such an interesting concept. So I definitely think that the setting, um, the, the, Fran the French setting that this is, is really interesting. And I think she did a great job with that. I also think that the pace and the, um, <clears throat> well, I don't want to say the plot. The pace was really good. I was definitely never bored. Um, it, I mean, I read it in like 24 hours, essentially. I definitely think that the pace of it was really well done. 
And it certainly, like I said, was not boring. But here are the problems that I had. So first of all, I was really intrigued by all the different guilds. Um, there are thieves, beggars, assassins, gamblers, mercenaries, smugglers, prostitutes, opium, opium eaters, and men of letters. Doesn't that sound super interesting? Yes, it does. <laughs> I felt like they were very glossed over. We never really got to know a lot about how they work, um, <clears throat> what life is like in these guilds. There were so many time jumps and so many characters that I could not keep them straight. So she used the names of a lot of the characters from Les Mis. And I'm not familiar enough with Les Mis. I mean, I've really only seen the play itself and not even like the play, like the movie. So I am not versed in Les Mis. But from the reviews I have read, a lot of people say that it's not accurate. I can't contest to that. I have no idea. But I will say for myself, like, I thought that the concept was really interesting, but I feel like I never really got to know what the guild was, what happens in them, um, how do you rise in the ranks. Like, I just don't know. Uh, we certainly never saw the gamblers or the mercenaries. Uh... I kind of saw the smugglers. I don't know. I couldn't even remember what all the guilds were, if that tells you anything. I thought that was really interesting concept, but it didn't come to fruition. And then I also had a lot of problems with, like I said, the time jumps. I'm telling you, I had no idea. I still have no idea how old Nina is, our main character. The only reason I figured out at one point that she was nine when this whole thing started was because when they introduced um, Eddie, they said she was 12 and made mention that Nina was three years younger than her when she was brought into the Guild of Thieves. I just have a big problem with time skips where we miss a lot of character development. They were all very, unfortunately, one-dimensional characters. Nina was a thief. She's the perfect thief. That's all we know. Um, Eddie was beautiful. That's all we know. <laughs> um, it just, nobody grew. And I did not find myself caring about these characters at all. Could have cared less. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to, I'm trying to make this as non-spoilery right now as I can while I talk about the things that I had issues with. And then we can talk a little bit about some spoilers. But, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think. I'm trying not to get off topic here because there were so, like, I literally could not sleep. I stayed awake an extra hour because I was just so trying to figure out if it's me. Like, did I just make these things up? But I really don't think I did. So, anyway, I'm rambling. <clears throat> so, we've talked about um, time skips, the characters, the plot. I thought I knew the plot, but the plot do dove in, like, five different ways. Um, there were like five different plots and they all wrapped up perfectly, which I hate. Um, everything seemed to just go smoothly and, you know, everything ended up being fine. So they didn't have to question anything. Um, Nina never like stepped up and was like, hey, why am I doing this? You know, maybe I shouldn't do this. <laughs> um, they just went along with everything and then every plot like... You might not hear about it for 10 chapters and then all of a sudden it's wrapping up. So, I just, I don't know. I, yeah. So, my rating, unfortunately for this, was two out of five stars. Um, and I don't know that I will actually continue with this series. It just was not, it didn't, it, it was not for me. Um, so, from here, I'm going to talk about a couple spoilers just because I want to talk about them. So, uh, if you don't want to hear anything else, thanks so much for tuning in. But, okay, going back to talking about how Nina was nine when she was brought into the Guild of Thieves. So, I just have such a hard time. It's so unbelievable to me that she was nine years old and they tasked her with stealing the crown jewels from the castle. And she breaks into Versailles, steals the crown jewels from off of the sleeping prince's neck <laughs> and escapes willy-nilly no problems I don't know what nine-year-old 
can do that. And if they can, that's great. But I need some more information about how she's such a good thief. How did she become this way? I know her dad trained her, but that it does not give me much. So I had a big issue with that. <laughs> I mean, nine is very young to be breaking into um, Versailles. So there's that. And then, as I mentioned earlier, Nina has to break into this unbreakable, like she's breaking into the jail. And they're all like, no, it's never been done. It's never been done. And she's like, I'm the black cat. I can break into anywhere. I, I can do anything. And all of a sudden, she's literally breaking into this prison. And within five pages, we've broken in. We've stolen this guy out. And we're good to go. What? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. I just had a really hard time. And then we kind of forget about her older sister for like, I thought at first that this was going to be all about getting her back. No, we definitely don't like that whole plot kind of goes away till the very end. So I just, I don't know. It was very disappointing because I was really looking forward to reading this and I thought it sound it, it, the concept is there. The concept is great. Um, all of these guilds I'm super interested in. But also it's classified as fantasy and there's no magic in it. Like, I don't know why it would be classified that way. <sighs> I'm just not really sure. <sighs> well, guys, that's going to be it for, t uh, well, yesterday's vlog. I'm going to go ahead and edit that and get that up. And thank you so much for tuning in. Sorry for the squeaking. And I will pick up with you here in just a few minutes.